Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video I will be teaching you the 7 simul clock method. So this method has been recently developed and become really popular for clock solving because it's a no flip method which means that you don't need to flip the clock like in the normal clock method. Thank you to the clock solvers discord server for sharing this method. I'll put the written method in the description so that you can learn it if you prefer to learn that way. But this video will basically be going over all the the basics you need to know the most basic seven simul method. Caleb Trollford has a slightly different method which I personally find is worse than this one however if you would like to learn it I'll link the video up here but anyway let's get on with the tutorial. Before we start you need to know some basics so I recommend you learn normal clock flip method and Sheeran if you don't already know them because they will help you out with this method especially because this is quite a hard method but just in case here is some basic stuff you need to know so for seven simul you will need to memorize five numbers so m1 to m5 they're pretty simple and basically how they work is you memorize numbers clockwise i recommend you use english numbers and for anti-clockwise moves so I recommend you use either a different language for numbers negative 1 to negative 5 or I know also a lot of people like to use letters so if you're more comfortable with doing that then I recommend you do that. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 are not really numbers that you should be using because that would make you move over 10 times which is just the equivalent of going in the reverse direction or anti-clockwise direction. If you don't understand how this works hopefully by the end of this tutorial you'll get it. If not then make sure to check out this video here which will basically explain it in more depth. But anyway, let's get on to the actual tutorial. So the scramble will be in the description and on screen right now if you'd like to follow along. Starting off, I guess we'll just start with 12 facing upwards, although you can do this method from anywhere. So the first thing that you'd need to know is how many it takes for L to get to U. So you do this by knowing that it takes negative four moves for this edge here which is the left edge to the up edge here it's negative four because if we move it negative four times it'll match like that so you memorize that which will be negative four so just remember that that's not m1 though m1 continues where you do a y2 so make sure that 12 is still facing up and here you need to see how many it takes for l to get to ul so that would be negative three because again if we just go negative three like that these two will match so from there we have the numbers negative four and negative three and what you do with those numbers is you add them together so that would equal negative seven but negative seven is also the same as five because if you go which is negative seven, that's also the same as just going five clockwise moves. It ends up in the same spot. So we will just memorize the number five. So then for M2, which is the second number we memorize, we will see how many it takes for U to match with C, which is the same as two, because this up edge takes two moves to match with this centerpiece. So M2 will be two. Next up is M3, where we go how many it takes for L to reach U. And hopefully you get this by now, but just in case you haven't, that would be two, because it takes two moves for L, which is this piece here, to get to U. So M3 is two. For M4, you want to go back, so do a Y2, back onto this side and again make sure 12 is facing up and what you want to do is to see how many it takes for R to get to D which would be 6 as you can see they're exactly 6 moves away from each other so you memorize 6 but we're not done yet so just keep in mind the number 6 and then you go back to this side again with 12 facing up and you go to these two so you see how many it takes for R to get to DR, which is two, because it takes two moves for this piece to reach this piece. The last number here was six. So you keep in mind six, and then this number was two. So what you do is you add these two numbers together, 
which is 6 plus 2, which equals 8. And the equivalent of 8 is negative 4. So you'd memorize negative 4, or whatever language you use to memorize negative 4. Now the final number you need to memorize is M5. And this is pretty simple. You just go D to C. And basically that number is 4, so M5 is 4. And now I'll just put up all the numbers on screen. From the place that we memorized the last number, we go back to this side, to the place where we memorized the first half of the first number, which is this side. And now we can start execution. So for execution, for the first move, you want to have all of the pins up except for this DL pin. You want the bottom left pin to stay down. So you have this pin, this pin, and this pin up, and this pin down. And what you want to do is execute M1, which is your first number, on any of these three up pins. I would recommend using the UR pin for this, but you can use these two pins if you really want to. And so our first number was 5, so we would just move the up pins by 5 spots, which would be here. And then you want to execute your second number, also known as M2, on this down pin. And our second number was 2, so we would do 2 moves on this pin, so like that. Then what we want to do here is we want to put this UL pin down, so now we have these two on the left side pins down, and these two right side pins up. And from here, what you want to do is you want to execute your third number, or M3, on these down pins. Typically, I'd like to do it over here. So our third number is 2. So from here, we just do 2 moves on any of these down pins. And then on the up pins, this is a bit confusing, but it is intuitive. What you want to do is you want to match U with L. And you can do this by moving any of these two up pins. Again, usually I like to use this top right dial. And you do this by matching U to L, which is just like this. And the next step usually is you put this pin down and then you solve these. However, we have a skip here, so I'll just switch to an example on screen of how you'd normally execute the next step. So what I was talking about here is basically usually you will not have a square. Instead, they will be completely randomized, such as in this case. So these two are matching, and from here what you would do is you'd have this bottom right pin up and all of these down, and you'd want to just move it so that the center is matching with these two now and then you also want to move this down pin in the top left you want to make it matching with these three as well so you do this like that and now you have a square so after this step what you want to do is you want to put up these L pins so that you have all the pins up except for this UR pin which is the top right and from here you want to execute your fourth and fifth numbers. So our fourth number in this case was negative four so we just do our fourth number which is M4 on the any of these three up pins. Again all of the pins are up except for this top right one so we do negative four and then we execute our final number, which is M5 on this down pin, which was 4. And that's all your memorization done. So from here, it's completely intuitive. So for the next step, you want to put this pin down so that now the left pins are both up and the right pins are both down. And from here, you want to make sure that these two are matching. And you do this by moving the up pins, which is either this pin or this pin. I like to use this pin. And you want to match the D dial to the R dial. So for this case, it's 6 and you can just do it like that. And don't move any of the pins yet, because now what you want to do is you want to match this dial to this dial. 
so the ur dial to the dl dial and you can do this by doing a negative three in this case so now these two pins are matching and from here what you want to do is you want to put this dl pin down so that only the top left pin is up and all the rest are down from here you want to match this square to these two pins so you can do this by moving the up pin so that these two and this whole square is matching and you also just want to move this down pin to match like that so that now you have all of these matching now this scramble has been pretty lucky but don't just think oh you can just put all the pins up and then move them to 12 that doesn't work from here you have to do only the dr pin up so you just put the dr pin up so that you have the bottom right pin and the top left pin up and then the top right and the bottom left pins are down from here you want to move them all to 12 so you have to move them separately so you have to move typically these won't be matching all the time they'll be like this or like that so for however they are you just want to move them to 12 this is really simple so you just move this to 12 and then you move this to 12. so these two are moving by themselves and then usually you can just go like that and if we have done everything right the other side should be solved and it is so that's good however there have been quite a few skips in this scramble and this method is quite confusing so i will do another example solve okay so now we have the next solve the scramble should be on screen now so we are going to start here and again our first number is l to u so that would be negative five and then we'd go on this side make sure to only do a y2 always and never rotate weirdly like this because that will make your memo incorrect and so from here you want to do l to ul which is six and so remember here this was negative five so you want to add those two numbers together which will give you one from the same spot you want to see how many it takes for u to c which would be negative three so m2 is negative three for our third number which is m3 you want to see how many it takes for l to get to u which is negative three so our number is negative three for m4 you turn around to the first side and you see how many it takes for r to get to d which in this case is three we're not done yet so you go back to the side and you want to see how many it takes for r to get to dr which is negative five so this was three and then negative five so we add those together and that gives us negative two so m4 is negative two and then for our final number you see how many it takes for d to get to c which in this case is just one so m5 is one for execution you go back to the first side where you started memorizing so basically from the side that you memorized your last number, you want to do a Y2. For execution, you want to start by putting all of the pins up except for the bottom left pin. So all of the pins are up except for DL. And so you want to execute your first number on the up pins. In this case, our first number was one. So you want to do just one on any of these three up pins and then you want to execute m2 which is your second number on the down pin in this case our number was negative three typically most people say it's best to use your pinky for this but starting off you can use your thumb if you like so negative three then you want to put the left pin down so that now both your left pins are down and your right pins are up and you want to execute your third number on the down pins in this case the third number is negative three so you want to do negative three on the down pins and then from here this move is intuitive you want to match the u pin to the l pin and you do this by moving the up pins so you want to match u to l and you can do this by doing five moves like that so that these two are the same next up you want to put all of your pins down except for this dr pin which is the bottom right so from here usually your center 
pin won't be matching these two. In this case it was matching but normally it isn't matching so let's just pretend it wasn't matching. So from here what you do is you'd move this up pin to match these two. So you do this like that so that these three are now matching. And while doing that you can also simultaneously move this pin to match these three. And you can do this by moving any of these three down pins. So we do it by doing that. And now we have a square here. Next thing you want to do is you want to put these two L pins up so that these three pins are up except for the UR pin which is down. And then you want to execute your fourth number which is M4 on the up pins. In this case it was negative two so we want to do negative two moves on the up pins and then you want to do m5 which is your last number on this down pin which is the top right pin in this case the number was one so we just do one like that and then our memorized execution is done and we can begin the intuitive part of the solve so from here what you want to do is you want to put this pin down so you have the left pins up and the right pins down and you want to match d to R. You can do this by moving the up pins until the bottom one matches the right, which in this case now it does. You also want to use any of these two down pins on the right and you want to match this pin to this pin. And you can do this by doing four moves on the top to make these two match. Now you want to put all your pins down except for the top left which is UL and you want to match this square to these two right here and you can do this by doing negative four moves like that. So now you have this whole cross matching as well as this square here and from here with these three pins still down you want to move this pin to match all of these. So you do this by moving the bottom right down pin or this pin usually by doing that which is basically just moving this until they match so you have these two matching and all of the others matching and from here this is the last part so you just move the bottom right up and now you move everything to 12 simultaneously by moving the down pins at the same time to 12 which in this case is on the right and then moving all of the up pins to 12 which again it's on the right and you do this at the same time and hopefully the clock is solved. So I'll now be giving you a couple tips. My first tip is that if you ever see a bar where this is matching and this is matching, you want to put them at the back with the matching one at the top. That way, when you go to this side, your second number, which is probably the hardest to execute, will be zero, and therefore it will make your solve a lot easier. My next tip for 7 Simul is to do a lot of solves because that's pretty much the only way to improve in clock. And if you really want to improve, just make sure to keep practicing because this method can be easily forgotten if you don't practice it enough. So be sure to practice. And yeah, if this video helped you out in any way and if you were able to learn 7 Simul with this video, be sure to like and subscribe because it does help me out a lot. And if you have any questions about this method, be sure to leave a comment because I'll usually get back to you in about half a day or so. So if you're confused about anything, always feel free to comment because hopefully I can help you out. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Stay safe.